What's up guys and welcome back to another Revit Tools video. In this video we'll be covering the scale tool. Scale, it's pretty simple. It's gonna scale things up or down. You don't have much more options besides that. So I've got a few things laid out here, some lines, walls, reference planes, and we'll see how the scale tool interacts with all of those. Because the scale tool works with lines, model lines, detail lines, walls, reference planes, dimensions actually. It works with images, PDFs and DWGs. I don't I don't have DWGs or PDF images to show, but it's the same idea that what you see here with these lines and walls will work just the same with images and PDFs. So let's get right into it. I'll go up here and I'll click the scale button up here and I'm prompted to select something. So I'll select this line, which is a model line. I'll hit enter. And you can see that it's selected. But if I look up here at the left, I have an option of scaling graphically or numerically. The default option is graphically, which is basically you choosing a place to start and end with a place in the middle to determine the scale or new scale of the object you've selected. So let me zoom in here and if I choose the end of this wall as my first selection, now I need to choose a second selection and then finally a third. So the difference between the second and third selection is the second is where I, I want to start the scale. So like the first selection would be like an anchor. You can see I'm anchored to that point. The second would be where I want to start a scale from. And then the third is where my final scale will end. So if you imagine that if my first scale starts at the end of this line, so my the length of my scale is the length of this entire line. And now if I were to click above here as a, my second scale point, that would be my second. So what we'll end up with is this line being scaled from the, the second point to the third chosen point. So my, my second point is the end of the line and my third will be up here. And we can see that the line grew to that third point. And that's because I had the first point being the anchor at one end of the line and the second point being the first scale point at the end, other end of the line. Something to know with scale, I, you might think like wh how could the scale tool scale the wall? Well, it, it doesn't actually scale the wall like the width of the wall, the contents of the wall, the parts of the wall, it's only gonna scale the, the length of the wall. Which, you know, that's not completely useful, I, but it's just something to know. You're not gonna end up you know, doubling the width of your wall if you scale that by 200%. So we just saw an example with that line there. And to better, to better display this, I'm, I'm, I'll draw a line that's four feet there, and I'll draw another one that is eight feet here. And let's say we wanna scale this first line to be exactly the length of this line. And I have them at four feet and eight feet, but you could have them at completely arbitrary numbers and it wouldn't necessarily matter. So. I'll select that smaller line, I'll hit the scale, and I'll choose my anchor point, which will be the end of the line. I'll choose my first scale point, which will be the end of the line, and then I'll come up to the point where I snap to that second line, which is the desired line length, and I'll, I'll click again, which will be my second scale point. And like I said before, the scale tool will scale from the first scale point to the second scale point, which is essentially the second and third point you select while using the tool. So now I'll make these I'll make these lines a bit more arbitrary and kind of weird. And I'll even zoom out just so we get or I'll zoom in so I get some weird numbers here that don't really matter. So there we go. I don't know what the lengths of these are, but if I want to scale this line to that line, I can very easily do that. I will select that line, use scale, get my anchor point, my first scale point, and my second scale point. And I get, 
I get it perfect every time. It doesn't matter what the lines lengths are. So maybe I want to go the other way. If I want to go the other way, it works the same, just a little backwards. I'll hit scale. I'll choose my anchor point. I'll choose my first scale point. So I want to, if I want to get, take this line and make it smaller, I'll choose the end of the line and then bring it down to meet this smaller line. There we go. Works just the same. So that's, that's a more of a systematic way of using the scale tool. You could also get pretty crazy with it because you, like before we were choosing the, the one end and the other end of the line as we scaled, you can, you can pick any arbitrary point anywhere in space to scale from. So if I want to anchor some random point out here and then I want to start scaling at the end of the line and then maybe I want to bring it on in all the way here I can get just this weird result based on the anchor point and where I start and finish the scale that's particularly why I don't see this the scale tool being, being all that useful although if you have a, a, a very particular thing you need to scale in a particular way that might be that's definitely a way to do it so we've, we've gone over the graphical option which is physically choosing a point an anchor point a scale point and a second scale point I could also choose numerical and this is set pretty arbitrarily but let's say I want to make this line 50% as long as it is so half so I, I'll just do 0.5 as my scale 50% and now I have a, a again I still need to choose a point but I'm only choosing an anchor point basically where do I want to scale that from so if I choose the center point I'll get both ends of the line coming into the center point, and so the length, overall length of this line will be reduced to half, just like that. I could also choose an anchor point of, I'll go back to numerical, I could choose the anchor point as the top, and then the bottom of the line would end up where the center of the line is because it's being reduced by half, but that's because it's anchored to this top point. You can see it right there. So there's a lot of ways this can work together, and honestly, you can you can do you can make multiple selections. This is not based on just one element selected at a time. You could do that just before, just like you did before. I could hit numerical, change this to I could change this to any arbitrary number I want to, and then I could choose a point which I want to scale this to. If I want to scale to this point in the center, everything will be reduced to 65% approximately towards that point and everything will converge a bit so that's how that works with lines if we work with walls I can select the wall go to the scale tool graphically I can for example choose the center point pick any point that I want to from there the end of the wall maybe and then drag it up from there and you can see the wall length is extended if I select it again I can choose graphically. I can go out in some random place, just some sort of angle as my scale, first scale point and then my second scale point. Again, that's very hard to use because it's an angle and the ultimate result is just the wall length being increased or reduced. But nice, it's nice to know that it works that way. You don't have, you're not stuck with that 90 degrees and just like walls and lines, reference planes work all the same. You can choose any arbitrary point. If I choose graphically, you can choose any, any point to scale from. Works just the same right there. So I've got, I've got a few walls here set up. I've got a few walls and a floor, some dimensions. And in fact, dimensions actually scale. And I will be honest, I, I have never used the scale tool to uh, on dimensions I, I just I never thought it would work much less why I would use it I, I can't say that I know so I, I have this dimension here I will hit the scale tool and I and, and just like before I have the graphical and numerical options and now I can start from any arbitrary point have my first scale point and then my second and you can see that doesn't really do anything because the scale tool is not going to associate or disassociate any of the dimension string lines 
to anything else. It, it's going to stay as it is. So honestly, the result of any scale that you do with the scale tool is only going to affect the overall length of the dimension string from from the objects that it's dimensioning. So as you can see, I'll, I'll go this way so we can see this a little better. But as I increase the scale of the dimension string, you can see it, it, it moves farther away from, from what it's being dimensioned to. Kind of weird. I don't exactly need to use that scale tool for the dim dimensions, but I guess it's good to know that you could use it for that. If I'm missing something with dimensioning string, uh, dimension strings with the scale tool, and scaling these dimension strings, please let me know in the comments below. I'm really curious if you you have used that successfully or if I'm just missing something in general. Having this angle dimension, again, it works the same way. I could scale it this way. It's only gonna change the extent to which this scale is showing up graphically. It's not gonna change the physical dimension of anything. Just me pushing and pulling does the same thing. So I'm, I can't quite understand why the scale tool is used with dimensions anyways getting back to these walls I've got these walls here and this is just one example of the very few instances I might end up using the scale tool and it, it, again it's very simple I'm gonna select I'm gonna hover over this wall I'm gonna press tab to select all the walls I'll click and now I have all of them selected and maybe I want to fit them to this floor plate so what I can do at this point is go to the scale tool and because the scale does not affect the width of the walls it's essentially moving the walls and aligning them to where I might want them to go to this floor plate so I can select this corner as my anchor and then choose the end of the wall there as my as my first scale point and then choose the end of the floor plate as my final as you can see I, I did get the length and because these, these squares are slightly different, it doesn't quite line up. But like before, what I can do is scale these two walls, select these two walls. I will go to the scale tool. I'll choose any point along here, works just fine. I will choose the center point of this wall and then choose the edge of that floor. move these dimension strings out so you can see this a bit better and oddly enough it moved the floor with it so that's kind of funny another example why I might not necessarily use the scale tool to move just move walls or align walls because there are other better tools that will move and align maybe the move and align tool so maybe you learned something maybe you didn't the scale tool it's pretty simple don't use it a whole lot but it can be useful in certain certain circumstances if you did learn something if you would please leave me a like it really helps also subscribe if you enjoyed this video definitely look be on the lookout for more videos coming out in the future we've got more tools videos and more different kinds of rivet videos coming out in the near future hope you have a wonderful day thanks for watching